Welcome to He Said Red Set, where Red is Vicki Fitch, serial entrepreneur, direct sales expert, business coach, and provider of Fitch Slaps. It's also where Red is always right. To introduce this week's He, here's Vicki Fitch. He Said Red Set. He Said Red Set. Hello, everyone. Welcome to He Said Red Set. Hello, everyone. Welcome to He Said Red Set. Hey everybody, Vicki Fitch here, your direct sales expert and the host of He Said, Red Said, where red is always right. You guys know we have a fun show with a little bit of business and a whole lot of fun, and I always bring you some stellar guests, right? Tonight we're on episode 49, almost 50, but we're on 49, and I have a major superstar in the YouTube field. If you guys have not heard me talk about him before, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna like preempt a little bit and tell you guys a little bit about my guest. He's a creative entrepreneur helping individuals and businesses develop engaging brands and content. Remember that word engaging, okay? Because it's really critical in this marketplace today and the space that we're in. He also has a background in both de design and marketing, which he helps his clients all over the world. He's a, he's a speaker. He's an amazing guy and he's funny as all get out. And you guys are going to know him from his cute, adorable face, his amazing hundred and almost 50,000 fans. We have the super one and only Roberto Blake in the house. Roberto, how are hey, you? Hey, how's it going? What's up, man? Awesome. How about you? <laughs> awesome. I was waiting. I was going to use that word and I thought I'm going to wait and let him drop his own awesome bomb right in here. <laughs> awesome bombs for days. Oh, I love it. I am so excited. And you know, I haven't actually told everybody what the name of the show. I came up with a theme for tonight's show and it's just called really? show me, show me the money. Okay. Because that's the big question. Everybody wants to know about YouTube. It's like, how do you make money? Like, you know, I'm putting my stuff out there. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. But how do you make money? So we're going to be diving into that in a few minutes, but there's just so many things to go on and so many pieces. And we are going to, um, you know, I like to do a little intro of my peeps in a way that's a little bit special. And so I love your intro video on your uh, YouTube page. And so we're going to actually go ahead and rock that video real quick. I think Rob has that queued up and we're going to rock that video and show everybody just a little bit more about who you are. Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake of RobertoBlake.com helping you create something awesome today. My mission is to help creative people, regardless of their age, geography, or background, achieve their goals, live their dreams, and create something awesome and share it with the world each and every day. Whether you're a photographer, a graphic designer, a writer, a marketer, or a musician, I want to help you share your vision and share the things that you're creating with the world for people who actually care about it. And I help you do that by teaching you how to use tools like Adobe Photoshop, how to market yourself, how to use things like video and photography to help get your message out there, and also give you encouragement and inspiration and tell you the things that I've been able to do that are successful. I also do reviews and tutorials for the products and the software that help me create awesome things and grow my business. And I talk to you a little bit in small business videos about that success and strategies you can use. So if that's the kind of thing you're interested in and you truly believe that you can create something awesome and that there are people out there that you wanna share it with, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel and to support what I'm doing here, become part of the Create Awesome community, and together we'll help you create something awesome today. So Roberto, I love that. I love the video. I love your passion. I love your energy. I love your orange. I love your awesomeness and this, like, I think we, we should do that. Like, we should both point at the screen and have people take some screenshots <laughs> because it's so cute. We're going to have to totally get together and do a selfie like that because it's amazing. Again, you have, you have, you've built a, a brand and stuff. And by the way, on, on fans, right? I see Cassie in the house. Melanie's here. Stacey Lynn, thank you guys for being here. If you haven't already, do me a favor and share that out. You guys share the broadcast out so we can make sure some other people are here, um, that they get to hear this great information. Kim Wendy is here as well because, you know, Roberto has got some serious knowledge bombs to drop. And those of you who were on my Periscope, uh, right before this, you guys asked some additional questions. So we're going to try, we're going to have to like really pummel through them to make sure, cause he doesn't really know what he's in for. We, you know, we're going to try not to give him any fit slaps. I don't know if he's been prepared for that. <laughs> 
but we're going to try anyway we'll see how it goes and we're going to continue to give you guys some rocking good value so make sure you share this out and for those of you who are downloaded the podcast on itunes stitcher spreaker wherever you guys have downloaded from thank you so much for being a subscriber thank you so much for this but i do recommend that you go and watch this episode at facebook.com slash vicky fitch one plus it will be on youtube it usually takes us a couple days we'll get this episode on youtube it's episode 49 with my guest roberto blake so roberto i have a question of the day before i do a little side segment and then we dive into some content so my question for the day is what exciting is going on in your life what exciting thing like exciting don't give me no dreary whiny like come on dude just step it up and tell me something exciting going on in your life uh so something exciting going on in my life is that i'm actually doing some really cool stuff with adobe it's actually gotten me back into doing more personal artwork projects so uh, me and adobe have been working together during their photoshop live events I'm going to be doing a lot more of that um, and later in this month. Uh, I just finished doing it this weekend with uh, senior product evangelist Paul Tranny, uh, Nathaniel Dodson from Tutvid, uh, Cody, just like a lot of amazing creative people. And it's just doing live streaming, believe it or not. But instead of just talking to the camera and engaging and answering questions, we're answering questions and engaging while doing Photoshop artwork. So wow. that's just really cool. And let me work on some personal projects, show some people some things, teach them how to use even basic tools, just mm -hmm. make some amazing artwork. And, uh, you know, it's just like, it's a way for me personally, like to just fall back in love with like the thing where I started, Go, like going back to your roots, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. So for me, that's just a lot of fun. It's great to work with Adobe directly. I'm working with three departments of theirs. I grew up on Adobe software. So like, that's kind of a dream come true, honestly, to be working with Adobe. Oh, that's fantastic. And I love that. And, you know, I have to say, one of the things as a business coach that I look at, I watch is people's facial expressions, their body language, you know, kind of, and you're like, your body got into it. Like, you're, I'm so excited about Adobe. I love, and look at that smile. Do you guys want to like package that thing up? I love it. It's, Good to hear. Yeah, you're that you're amazing because you are like I said you're first of all you're a happy guy. You uh you call, you tell it like it is. I've seen some of your um your your YouTube videos where you're just kind of like look. <laughs> yeah, I do that. I like I tell you know this interesting thing like a lot of people they're in YouTube and I feel bad for them because I know that they're in the business of being liked. And right. that's not a criticism to like bash on anybody. They're like but a lot of people their entire brand and their entire personality their entire internal world is predicated and their success and their finances is based on their fans liking them and loving them and accepting uh what they do and if that ever turns they know that because they built themselves on that they're done and so they're constricted and a lot of them are miserable i see people uh literally i i mean I hate to go on the slightly negative part of this but like i want to encourage people to go a different route so that's why i'm doing this there are literally big youtubers right now that are uh, breaking up as far as the relationship. Some of them are going on hiatus. Some of them are quitting their channel. Some of them are going through depression. I actually heard about a YouTuber that recently uh, had a bad breakup and actually tried to um, you know, harm themselves. Like yeah. this stuff is like serious. And the thing is if people make everything, I mean, social media is dangerous if you build it on vanity and being uh, liked. Uh, if you're a person who's extremely vulnerable, I mean, I would just caution people about that because it's easy to fall into that trap and it's just better to be yourself, tell it like it is and not change or pivot to just say, you know, if I do it this way, I can go more fans or, oh, I might lose people if I do or say this thing, even though it's who I really am. It's like, no, just like take your wins and losses on who you really are. I mean, just do that. Well, you know, I agree with that. And first of all, I want to say, hey, Miss Jenny Q in the house. And she says that you totally walked her through her rebranding of the Jenny Q show and you rocked it. So that is high regards because Jenny Q is my BNB. She's amazing. You know, right? Yeah. Who doesn't love Jenny Q? I mean, she's awesome. So, okay that you were talking about some some things that I, are really near and dear to my heart and and in a second we are going to introduce uh you know a, my rock star of the week so i just wanted him to be prepared that he's going to be coming up in a second but you know i agree i i have you know several books that are coming out one of them is a victim bully in your head you know the one after that is called own it how to step up and stand out because there are so many people like you're saying that are trying to 
fit themselves into, you know, the square, into the round hole, you know, the square peg in the round hole, because they're, they want, they're so desperate for that kind of connection that they're, it's all predicated on how people feel and not the content they're delivering. They're not, they're not looking for a tribe. They're trying to find somebody to fit in with. And, and I think you're right. That's really detrimental. And I also believe that it's important that we love what we do, like what you were just talking about. And that we, um, if we're not having fun, we're doing it wrong. We got to fix it. We don't have to quit. We don't have to bail. We don't have to hurt ourselves. We just have to adjust course and find somebody like Jenny Q did you to adjust course on the show or a business coach like me, someone that can help you reanalyze what's going on so you can get back the fun in your life. Or someone, you yeah, somebody that can help you just recalibrate, even if it's not even in the context of your business mm -hmm. or your content, you might need somebody to help you recalibrate your health or your, your mindset. And so I definitely encourage people to just, uh, you know, reach out if you need help with something. There's people who will be more than happy and willing to help you do whatever you need to do and just have that self-awareness and give yourself that opportunity. Yeah. And, and then I think that's really good advice because partly what we're out there doing, we are trying to build a tribe. We're trying to build a tribe that has our vibe. We want people that are attracted to us that are legitimately interested in what we have going on, not what they think we have going on because we were trying to pretend. Right. And so I, you know, I'm going to mention um, my rockstar group. I have a Facebook group called the entrepreneurial rock stars. And each week we have what's called a rock star of the week. And we introduce them here on the platform and we tell a little bit about them, who they are, what they're doing and give them a little cameo and a shout out. And so this week we have a graphic artist and illustrator who has something in common with you, obviously there, Roberto. And he's also my illustrator for, for my next book coming out, Evict the Bully in Your Head. He's also doing a bunch of other stuff for me. So I'd love to introduce you to Mr. Jay Mackey. And I think it's the second time I ever got his name perfectly right. And we're going to put his information up in a minute, but I'd love to put Joe, um, put uh, Jay on the screen so we can chat for a second and then we'll put his uh, card up in just a second. So, um, you know, if you guys haven't met, there he is. There, boom. Boom. Mr. Jay in the house. What's up, bro? Oh, <laughs> just loving life. Oh. I love hearing that. That is designing and love life. <laughs> that is such fantastic news. And you know, Jay, I know that we had you as a rock star of the week and we had a glitch with the video. We wanted to bring you back. It wasn't even just with the video. It was actually wasn't going live or Facebook was doing wacky things or something, but I'm pretty sure we're on live this time because I see some comments that says Roberto and Vicky are amazing. I'll take that. Thank you very much. <laughs> and then Jay, you have, honestly, I said this last time, I'm going to say it again, and then we are going to um, do a quick, uh, video clip but you have you I feel like you pull things out of my brain like you know when I started explaining to you a victim bully in your head and what it was when you came back with that first that one drawing I was like oh my gosh that's it it's just better because that's better than what I was saying so you are masterful I love your illustrations your graphics are wonderful and we have a quick testimonial from somebody that that can that you completely rock their world so can you Rob can you pop that video up Hi, everybody. I'm Stacey Lynn Harp from Bible News Radio, and I want to congratulate Jay Mackey on being the rock star of the week. And I can tell you in my book, he is. He's totally a rock star. He took my logo, and I didn't even know what I wanted, and he worked with me and did gazillions of revisions, and he got me from concept to completion. And for the first time, literally in 12 years that I've had my company, I have a logo that represents me. So, Jay, you're a rock star. I'm proud of you, and thank you for all you do. And there is the graphic that he did for her that she said was perfect for her. So we're really excited that you were able to really rock that dream for her and really bring that to fruition. I can tell you, I have a shirt with that on there. I've seen people posting with mugs. And uh, so, you know, Jay, you're becoming like a worldwide name. You know, people, people are listening. They are hearing you. And I know that you did some special stuff for me last year around this time for Chocolate Johnny's birthday. You did the Rhino shirts. I mean, again, you're, you are a rock star. I'm so proud to have you. Did you want to share something specific with the audience? tonight yeah i just wanted to say how much that i've appreciated everything that I, I first of all love me some stacy lynn right what a, what a beautiful person um i can't tell you how much it, uh, of an influence vicky's been in my world over the last year um i basically took a fledgling business that i've just kind of restarted again i was a previous entrepreneur for 10 years and uh went into the corporate world for 10 years i'm kind of still there but i'm working my way out everybody and uh, I'm loving what I'm doing. Uh, again, I was classically trained as a graphic designer at the University of North Texas here in Denton. 
Um, so that was my degree um, and it's great to get back to my passion. And uh, again, I can't tell you how much I appreciate everything that Vicky's doing for me. And uh, man, just, just everything is just coming true right now. So I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Oh, well, we are so glad. And there's his information up there, you guys. So you guys make sure that you take a screenshot of that. Definitely connect with this man. I'm telling you, he's one to watch. He's got a lot of wisdom, a lot of information. and He can totally rock your world. So Jay, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you uh, popping in, saying hello, and we will look forward to seeing you in the Rockstar group. If anybody else wants, if you guys are interested in being part of the Rockstars, you know, we encourage you to go to the Entrepreneurial Rockstars group, but you can go, the easiest way to get there is vickifitch.com slash freebies and click on the link because it's sometimes people it's hard to spell entrepreneur <laughs> entrepreneurial and so we like to get, help you get in there easy way so thank you so much jay again rock that dream brother and we will look forward to seeing you soon so roberto get back in here and let's talk we got to talk we're going to talk all kinds of stuff we're talking money we're talking relevant searches we're talking i got i mean i got some of my own personal questions just forget the audience for a minute me and you we gotta get <laughs> we're gonna get down to some conversation because i gotta fix my i gotta fix my youtube space so right on yeah like like you know it's like my own personal this is my own personal situation people so feel free to throw up your comments but i'm, I'm gonna get focused right over here so i see what dollars. you did you got me on the show for free consulting <laughs> I didn't, but it's working very well right now. I like it. <laughs> Tracy's in the house. Thank you so much for being here, you guys, again. Okay, so Roberto, the, some of the things I had people asking during the week, like they know that you're coming on, so they'll tweet me, you know, ask Vicky, they'll tweet and find out, hey, ask him this, ask him that. Right before the broadcast, I had a bunch of new questions come up. So I'm going to kind of blend those all in and find sure. out how we can really, you know, really rock our dreams here. So, um, you know, the, I, I called this segment kind of helping the noobs make money, right? Because we all <laughs> that we're all a bunch of noobs if we haven't been around. I mean, okay, this is a true confession right here. I have 25 subscribers on my YouTube channel, right? I mean, seriously, right I haven't actually really promoted my YouTube channel at all. I only basically was like a lot of entrepreneurs used it as a housing to, you know, put things up on my website, that kind of stuff. Wasn't really driving traffic to it until our old buddy Blab went down and all 300 videos uh, have no place to go. And so I have got to load them onto YouTube, which comes to another question I'll ask you in a minute. But the sure. first thing is we are going to show a little clip of one of your videos called 10 small YouTuber problems. And then we're going to have you answer those pieces. So Rob, can you roll that quick clip for us? Number one, not getting noticed and discovered in YouTube. A lot of you are under the mistaken impression that you need a huge subscriber base in order to get noticed in YouTube and for YouTube to favor you appropriately. The YouTube gods are not that serious and are not that complicated. I will explain exactly how that works. You need good titles, descriptions, and tags and relevant information in that description that ties to the video, stuff that people would search for, and the tags, maybe seven to 12 of them. They need to be things that people would type into that little search box. I've seen time and time again. In fact, I was working with a client and we were looking at our competitors and a channel with 3,000 subscribers ranked above a video for a channel with 1 million subscribers. So it all comes down to, are you making it easy for people to search in YouTube and find you? Big YouTubers dominate the first page of YouTube search because they've been doing this for years and they get it and they know how it works. It's the same thing like playing basketball. If I've been playing basketball for five years and you've been playing for five days, you are not gonna dunk on me. Okay, so that clip right there, as, as a quick reminder, is talking about relevant searches and the right tags and how you're supposed to have seven to 12 tags and, you know, that kind of stuff. So I would love for you, I, I know that, you know, I kind of didn't tell you that we were doing, you know, a 10, our one minute clip here and one minute clip there, but talk to us about those important parts. Talk to us about relevant search terms, what that really means and what are, what are tags and what are the relevant tags people should be using as a new YouTuber? So, I mean, the tags are individual to your specific video and also individual to the intentions of your audience. So the thing is, I can't tell you what the tags are for your video if I don't know what your video is about. You have to kind of reverse engineer this, as our friend Gary Vee would say. And so the way I try to explain search and relevance to people, whether we're talking about YouTube videos, whether we're talking about a Google uh, search, whether we're talking about social media in general, the way that I explain search engines is that they're trying to emulate a human being that is hunting 
for an answer to a problem. So what I tell people to do is to imagine that whatever their content is, is that it's a single piece of paper in a folder full of other pieces of paper in a file cabinet full of folders in a room full of filing cabinets. And that is what I tell them to imagine because it's like, how do you make someone find one piece of paper in all of that? Everything needs to be labeled and everything needs to be intentional and organized and purposeful, and it needs to be able to stand out on its own. So sometimes I'll illustrate this by saying, okay, I have a blank piece of paper. How do I distinguish this from five other blank pieces of paper? Well, I can write something on the top of it that gives it a specific name, right? Mm -hmm. But if everything has you know, a name or a category and those things are similar, then I need to break that up and make them a little different at least. Okay, but now they still are just pieces of paper that have a word on it. So now at a glance, they all still look the same. So then I need to draw something on this that makes it unique and stand out. That's what a YouTube thumbnail is, uh, but I need needs to catch my attention. and needs to visually, if I can't read what it's saying, I don't speak that language. I don't know those words or, I, or it's too small for me. I need to be able to be able to see the drawing on that piece of paper and understand what this content is and what it's about. So that's where I talk about relevance and context. And so when everyone asks me this, and it seems like the hardest thing for them in terms of where to start with, how do I title my video? What do I write in the description? What should my tags be? It's simple. YouTube's a search engine. How would someone find this information? What's the question or the thing that they have to ask in order to get here? And how many different ways can they ask it? And how many different ways can you explain it and make it clear. If you were looking for this as a DVD on the shelf of a store back when those things existed, mind you, <laughs> what would you what would you be looking for? And then when you find it to figure out whether if it's the one you want or if it's the sequel, you'd have to read the back and read at least a few lines to understand this thing. So when people have no description or one line, I freak out because I'm like, how the heck do you expect someone to understand what this is? or that it's the right thing or to have no context? And even if they're like, well, no one reads those descriptions, Roberto. Well, YouTube is simulating human behavior. It's a search engine, so you're giving it nothing to go off of. So how is it supposed to deliver and serve this up to anybody when it has nothing to go off? You gave it a blank thing, and it's like in a pile. <laughs> hundred million hours of video uploaded uh, a day. What's it supposed to do with your thing? How's it supposed to get in front of anybody? Are you kidding me? Oh, I love that analogy because it's more, that's, it's not just like a needle in a haystack because that actually sounds manageable after what you just said. <laughs> this is like, um, it's like a molecule in the universe. So I love yeah. what you just said. That's, that's so, you know, that's so relevant. And so, you know, point on. So I have two questions about that. One is, you know, do you believe that, that long tail searches are more effective, that people should actually think, and if you guys don't know how long tail searches, you know, the keyword word search is that you're thinking of a phrase, not just a, um, you know, a word, but saying, how do I, or, you know, where is the, those kind of things where you're, you're dragging those in. Do you believe those are more relevant? 110%. If your content is in the context of business, like most of us, mm -hmm. and it's in the context of solving a specific problem, demonstrating something, providing a service, providing information, how to, what is, how can I, um, five things, five facts, five problems, 10 problems, what if. Those, those things matter and people search those and that's right. But in the event that you have something that is not that and it's something that's say uh, tentpole, newsworthy, something event-driven, then you have to go off of that. And then a catchy headline um, is slightly better or something that sets up curiosity. I tell people, if you can't go with the context of long tail, then at least trigger human curiosity. It doesn't have to necessarily be clickbait. I interpret clickbait as it's fine to do if I'm delivering a good video that wasn't, you know, a fake or a hoax or not what I, you know, if I if I deliver on the promise of the video, then it's fine to write an interesting or catchy headline for attention mm -hmm. because I'm delivering on the value of the thing that I said. So mm -hmm. I don't, I would say don't mislead people, but it's okay to have a catchy thumbnail. It's going to get attention and it's okay to um, have a catchy headline and you should be trying to trigger curiosity, human emotion, curiosity, a little controversy if it's appropriate. Um, and so if you do those things, I say you're fine. You can be a little clickbaity. 
Okay. Well, and then, you know, like for instance, I just had a blog post. I don't know if you saw, but it was called um, when your knight in shining armor shows up in a tinfoil suit. And so a lot of people were like, what the heck is that? You know, what happened? What's going on? And it, and it's exactly, I mean, it talks about knights and dragon slaying and all kinds of stuff, but it, it wasn't a, a disappointment where it sounds like somebody's a disappointment, right? The knight in shining armor and the tinfoil suit. It's really more about engaging, um, you know, a positive way you deal with other people. Right. And so, you you know, would you say something like that was still good, even though it's probably not going to be being searched? Or would you say that Ab was absolutely if you have a strong distribution strategy, because it's, it's supposed to be something like that that triggers curiosity, the way you're going to be relevant in index is off of search and not searching, sorry, share and behavior. So sharing behavior for that type of content, something to where I don't have a way to get this search. Like, for example, if I was going to do something, if I was going to do something for like um, trip advice from tripadvice.com, which is relationships and dating, um, I would literally do something like how to get her to say yes. And it would literally have like a guy like down on bended knee, but it wouldn't show a ring. It would just like set that up because we all know what that is. It's like, wait a minute. And so all of a sudden there's curiosity there. Sure, because, sure. So like, wait, how do you get her to say yes? Like, <laughs> or, or it's like, or how to get her to say yes, guaranteed? Oh, wait, guaranteed? Wait yeah. a minute. So now I'm going to watch this just to see if this is for real or like, or if I'm going to yell. Like, right, right. Know, the build up. So like, you know, these are things, it's, psycho, it's psychology. It's like, um, you know, it's funny. I tell people all the time that it's like, if you're going to take in any class in college, if you're going to go into, if you're going to even audit a class, you're going to pay for class or any debt, take three psychology classes and one primer and intro to business. It'll, it'll do you better than any other thing you do in your entire college career. Well, you know, and that's, it's a really good point, right? Is that a lot of people don't understand what they're looking for. And so they're not sure how to find it. And so when people like you or I are trying to help direct them in an area that we're confident and confident and comfortable in, it really helps us. And by the way, hey, Stoney, welcome to the broadcast. I think I saw a few other people pop in. We really do appreciate you guys here. And if you haven't already, do me a favor and hit that share button. Um, make sure people know, because again, if you guys, well, I'm sure if you guys can throw one in the chat box for me that you think that Mr. Blake over here is dropping some serious bombs on us, um, there is more to come. I got to tell you i have a couple surprises in store for him and some fun stuff so i know it's not our typical he said red said kind of episode but there's so so this one okay instead of a little bit of business and a whole lot of fun it's a whole lot of business and a little bit of fun because he's so cute to look at anyway right <laughs> so okay i have another question that's come from our audience too is the difference between seo for facebook for instance or twitter versus uh youtube is there a difference and what is it by example using hashtags or using different terms what would you say of to people that are trying to do that, those those same kind of things facebook seo and facebook search is in its infancy facebook still goes very algorithm driven and not a search algorithm but a user behavior and preference algorithm so psychology and luck plays a bigger role in it with facebook uh, than you might imagine, and visually driven content that's much more shareable, much more clickbaity is going to perform better in Facebook. Facebook, if you want to rock Facebook, I'm going to tell you straight up, you got to almost just go straight into the clickbait unapologetically, and then make sure that you're delivering entertainment or upfront value in under 10 seconds or less, or you are done. Um, so, <laughs> But, but, and again, it can be, it can be either fun, it can be informative, it can be a mix of it. What would perform well in Facebook? infographics, infographics that break out data visually and making them engaging and visually appealing, that will perform very well in Facebook. Now, granted, Facebook search is not something people do a lot. When people search Facebook, they're searching for brand pages, Facebook groups, and people. They're not searching content. Facebook is not Google, not yet. I do anticipate over the two to three year period in the same way that they clone everything else because they're the new AOL. <laughs> they just clone Snapchat. Sorry, they did. Uh -huh. uh, actually, no, they just cloned Snapchat for the second time. They just released, they're releasing, and it's over like in what, Portugal or something? Like their little bizarro version because mm -hmm. Instagram stole Snapchat stories. And I'm not hating because it's a better user experience and it's a better <laughs> UI design as well. And I love it. And I love that I can go back easily. I can navigate it. Facebook, I'm uh, sorry, Instagram and Facebook got stories much better than Snapchat. I'm not counting Snapchat out. I think Snapchat just needs to become an augmented reality content platform. Whole nother story. But let's get back onto the topic of search. I bring that up to say that Facebook, don't think of it as a search engine. Twitter is a search engine, but Twitter is also a broadcast platform. So it works very much similar or is aligned, in my opinion, to radio. And I believe it's one of the best syndication and distribution tools for a podcast. 
but also for video content. Well, I mean, seriously, like you're, you are throwing out so much knowledge that I know people, I'm so glad that this is a podcast and those, those of you guys that downloaded this, you're going to have to listen to this over and over, but it is such meaty content. That's one of the thing about the guests on the show that we try and bring people that are really going to bring a lot of value to you. There's nobody like Roberto that brings knowledge. Like you heard him, he was just dropping information about Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Snapchat, all in like a 60 second clip, right? He, he kind of, uh, he kind of, of, um, I don't know, kind of filled you in on some of the things you may not have known and helping you understand a few other things. So Roberto, let's talk about something like the podcast, for instance, which is not, you know, which is it's people based. Like for instance, you know, I do a, um, a marketing strategy, making sure that people know that my guests and stuff that are coming out, I make sure that it goes out regularly. Who's coming out on the podcast. I send it on Facebook, Twitter, Inst well, I don't do so as much with Instagram, but Pinterest, you know, all across these platforms. So let's talk about the SEO that I will put on this show, for instance, afterwards, utilizing those, would you still continue to use hashtags in there? Because YouTube, although not a hashtag driven, it does still pull from Google when you use those hashtags. So, so share with us what kind of SEO you recommend for things that are non, you know, non basic content, but, or, you know, they're people driven as well as content information, like, like tonight, YouTube and, and uh, social media stuff. Well, Tim Schmoyer has a thesis about this that I've actually built on top of. Um, Tim Schmoyer is a great guy. He's a YouTube certified expert. Uh, he's also a family vlogger. Um, he has the Video Creators uh, TV YouTube channel. And he's one of the uh, leading experts in uh, YouTube along with uh, Daryl Eves. I'm actually going to be speaking with both of them at Social Media Marketing World. And we're both, uh, we're all speaking at Social Media Success Summit as well. Um, and so I talked to these guys a lot and Tim had an interesting theory about this. He believes that um, there are a couple of types of content for YouTube and I agree, but I think there's also a few more. He talks about um, hero content. Hero content is like when Gary Vee makes his little short films with DRock. Um, so that's hero content. That's very much like, okay, this is produced and is extremely well. And we release one of these a month and that's it or something or twice a year and that's it. Um, and then you have your uh, staple content that is driven by the algorithm. This is like when Gary takes snippets from the Ask Gary Vee show that asks us and answer a specific question for a specific type of viewer. And so that kind of content appeals to um, individuals based on a, a need or a desire that they have. Gary Vee show, and this is what he calls community-driven content, which means that out of the 300,000 people that watch Gary on YouTube, 40,000 people are diehard fans of the Ask Gary Vee show and will watch the Ask Gary Vee show. And, you know, that's it. Out of Gary's 1 million followers in Twitter, 40,000 of those people are diehard Ask Gary Vee fans. So, you know, that is what you have. You have your hero content, which is your big production thing. So if you were, um, and then you have your regular community driven content, which is what the podcast is. And then you have your co uh, content that's specific for trying to attract the algorithm is things that you want to be searched is things that's long tail is things that are evergreen. Mm -hmm. So I uh, try to do a uh, mixture of these types of content. I go very heavy on the long tail because that's my bread and butter, but I also feel like that's what I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about these one-off individual problems of like a lot. I get a lot of criticism from YouTubers that aren't business people mm -hmm. about my view to subscriber ratio because like Roberto, like, are you faking anything? Because you have 150,000 subscribers. Why are only 10,000 people watch this thing or that thing? And why is it you've only like hit out of the park with this many videos or so? It's like, because I don't give a crap about being a YouTuber. <laughs> I give a crap about helping one person figure out this one problem. And then it turns out that that one person is representative of 3,000, 5,000 people. Awesome. Mm -hmm. A business person would never whine about 3,000 customers. Are you kidding me? So no, like, I don't care about being a YouTuber because like I said, I'm not in it for the vanity. I'm not in it for the views. I'm not in it to be liked. That's right. why I can tell the truth and why I can be honest. So with you, with the SEO thing, I say that it's this, it's that this is content that is very community driven. It's human driven. You can hack it a little bit by mm -hmm. prefacing what the value of an interview is. Mm -hmm. So you would put that as the title in the first couple of parts of the title headline. Then you would put the like maybe the interviewee or guest to try and siphon value from their audience and to let them promote themselves because that's free distribution for you. And then the name of the show, because then that's the branding. Mm -hmm. And so you can do that. As for hashtag strategy, YouTube actually has implemented hashtags. Uh, 
and they work in a very specific way. But the real value of them to me is that when people tie their Twitter to their YouTube account, not you as a creator, but the people viewing you, when they like or favorite or add your video to a playlist, it tweets out to their followers. Mm -hmm. So that's syndication distribution. And then, you know, Twitter is a giant search engine. Hashtag culture is huge in Twitter. And thus, you're going to get distribution in there. So if it's something that you think is valuable enough and you can play off of a hashtag that there's conversation around, then I, I would add a hashtag if it's not going to get too long to the end of that knowing that you will get upcycle distribution in Twitter. I do that for my Periscope streams that I sometimes upload to YouTube because I know these are 40 minute long things. These are not something that the typical YouTube audience is gonna be a fan of, but there are 2,000 or 3,000 people in my audience audience that will watch these and they are relevant and I will get massive YouTube authority off of the watch time of those videos and I will like do very well off of that but can I bring new people into my ecosystem to get subscribers out of that based off of uh, Twitter SEO and Twitter hashtag culture so I do that and that's how I you know make that sort of thing work for me. I love it. And well, I'm going to make sure that um, when I do the SEO for this, I'm going to make sure I send it to you first for some authorization, some validation, <laughs> to make sure we got it right so I can start dialing in my YouTube strategy. Um, and what I'm going to do, first of all, I want to thank everybody at Enlightened Audiovisual. I know you guys do me a favor and put a one in the chat box. If you think that the way this is produced, this show is produced, is a rock star thing. I mean, honestly, we got Mr. Rob Hicks. We got Sam Gonzalez. You know, we call him Gonzo here. We got Jeff Adams. We got Jeff Fitzgerald. We have a whole team of people putting this production together for you. And I know that Roberto feels like he was honored, right? Did they treat you well in the green room, Roberto? Oh, yeah, we had a lot of fun. Yeah. And that's, that's what it's all about. So if you guys have a podcast or, or something that you guys are a production that you're trying to level up and step up your game, I hope that you will connect with Enlightened Audiovisual. And of course, if you don't know my BNB, Ms. Jenny Q, you can contact Jenny and she can give you all the information you need. So uh, as we go through, I'm going to, speaking of Enlightened Audiovisual, they are going to pop in another quick clip, which is number two on that list of um, 10 small YouTuber problems, which I will put the link for the whole YouTube video in the show notes. But um, if you could play that for us real quick, Rob. Number two, not getting subscribers. There's a magic formula and secret to getting subscribers that almost no one on YouTube talks about. Are you ready for it? Are you sure? Get more YouTube views and you will get more subscribers. You get more views by making more videos and also by getting them out into the world as much as possible. Subscribers don't generate views, in fact, the YouTube subscriber box is a little broken sometimes and most of your subscribers don't get notified about your views unless they click that little gearbox and say send me email notifications or send notifications to my phone. That is usually the main way that subscribers know you put out a video unless you have a schedule. So uh, subscribers don't generate views. Views generate subscribers. You want subscribers? Get more views. Get more views by promoting your videos, putting them out on Twitter and Facebook in appropriate places, not spamming, and that will help with your channel growth. The more views you get, the better shot you have at getting subscribers. And that means what Casey Neistat said, just make more videos. Okay, so you guys, again, this is just, those are two little tiny clips of a great video. And I think it's called 10 Small YouTuber Problems or something before that 10 Small YouTuber Problems. How to grow your YouTube channel, 10 Small YouTuber Problems Excellent. and how to fix them. You're awesome. And that's exactly, I was, as I was listening to it, I, like I said, it's, there's so much meat there that I had to pull out just a couple pieces to say, okay, let's, you know, what can we do with this part? You know, what can we do with this part? And two things came up for me personally that I thought would be real relevant. And then they kind of integrated with some of the questions I got, which was, you know, like I said, we were talking earlier about the fact that Blab went down and I have over 300 videos there. So, you know, on a strategy of putting them up on YouTube, I'm, I'm getting the current ones, you know, listed, but do you recommend like a big bulk strategy where I get one a day, I get 10 in a day with, you know, to load them on? Cause I know, uh, Amy Schmidauer was here last week and she was saying, YouTube was saying, you should only do once a week, maybe twice a week at the most. So I wonder, you know, it, it, does it show authority to have a whole bunch of videos? Do you, you know, what's your recommendation there for somebody? It, it depends. And when YouTube says that, I know where they're coming from. But I also know that if you look at, and there's a reason for this, and it's not for everybody, it's also a matter of intentions and scale and what you're capable of and what your agenda and goal behind it is. I do daily content. 
I wouldn't recommend that for uh, for Amy. And Amy tried that for a while. Um, and the thing is, there was an uptake and a ramp up for her, but it wasn't sustainable for her type of content and for what she enjoys and what her energy level is, and so on and so forth. And also for for um, female creators, it is hard to bulk produce content a lot of times because of the uh, the disproportionate um, skewing of appearance and wearing the same thing over and over and style and all the prep work. Like I like it would I could do it, but it would be more challenging. I would probably take more advantage of live streaming if I was a female creator. As a male creator, I'm able to put on the um, you know green create awesome shirt for Mondays. Whoops! Did we freeze there? Shoot eight videos in an hour. Th 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 shoot. Them. I think we had a little tech glitch there. I think we're back though. Um, okay, yeah. We were talking about your green shirt. So if you want to just cut, come right. in from there. Sure. My green shirt uh, is the Monday t-shirts, the Create Awesome Monday t-shirt for design videos. I can shoot eight videos in this shirt back to back behind with my desk or at my bookshelf and nobody is the wiser and they know that I do this. I tell them up front, they're like, hey, I'm shooting two months of video in a day, like, and done. I don't have to shoot videos every day and release them like some YouTubers. That's not how I choose to roll. I do it like a soap opera. I'm like, I'm just shoot, 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 edit, 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 do everything in bulk, batch it. Uh, but the thing is, if I was a female creator, I understand the dynamics are different and that that would be much more challenging. Is it doable? Yes. It would probably take me three times as long though, just because of how that works. So when Amy says that, I understand where she's coming from. Uh, she's uh, one of the smartest people um, about YouTube marketing. Her, Sonny Leonard Doozy, our good friend Steve Dotto, uh, Tim Schmoyer and Deller Eves, uh, uh, David Walsh, Gideon Shalwick. These are people who know what they're talking about. However, I used to tell people the one day a week strategy as well, but you will grow much slower if you do that. And that's where I started. Mm -hmm. Read now, again, it's a matter of do you have to, is content already produced? Or do you have to produce content? That's a different story. Are you a solo creator versus a team? Mm -hmm. Because the YouTubers that have teams, like Tim Schmoyer does, can produce content five times a week without a sweat. People who have teams, like Philip DeFranco, can produce daily content without a sweat. The Young Turks, they're a news network channel, and they have multiple YouTube channels that aren't just news. They have entertainment. They have this. But they have an infrastructure to where they're putting out eight videos a day on one channel. And then they're putting out a live stream as well. And so they, uh, there's, you know, so there's different models. And YouTube, when it gives this advice, is giving blanket advice to the far majority of people for what they're capable of. And they're also conscious of the fact that their audience skews younger. They know that the, a lot of these YouTubers are in high school or in college, that the youth demographic makes up the majority of the viewer base and the creator base. Those of us who are a little older, more experienced, more mature, and have more resources and are the masters of our time actually could do things very, very differently. And if you already have a backlog of content and you have infrastructure and you have a following and you have a distribution strategy, if you are prepared and you can optimize each video to be effective or to serve a purpose or to sell or to be a body of work to uh, sell you as an authority or industry expert, it is not disadvantageous to release a video every day or video every week to establish your backlog for those purposes and to optimize it accordingly, especially if the res you have the resources to outsource and put a team behind it and make sure that every detail and every uh, check in the box is going to be done for you. So the mm. thing is, I caution people to be self-aware of not taking blanket advice. A lot of people, and this is something that I know like Amy has talked about, a lot of people talk about the sweet spot of the attention span of YouTube mm -hmm. is like, you know, three to five minutes. Mm -hmm. But the thing about that is you can't use that because that number is dictated by what the average is. Mm -hmm. You and I remember in school that averages are, you know, the lowest number and the highest number and everything in between, and it's balancing out. You and I both know that the boomers offset the, um, the credit score. The actual average credit score of most people who use credit is very different than what the numbers tell us because we know that the scoring skews in favor of the boomers. Well, the scoring in YouTube skews in favor of the youth, which means if you don't have an under 18 demographic and audience, the average doesn't apply to your audience. Right. That's not their intention. People who come to you and I, they're on the lot to buy. Right. They have time. And the thing is, they might look at a four to five minute video and not think that we're an expert enough or that we're giving any real depth. Hmm. If every single thing we put out is four to five minutes, while some people respect and appreciate brevity, 
-hmm. Some people use that as a perception of us not having depth or authority in what we're talking about mm -hmm. because we can't do it at length. Mm -hmm. You can't fake 90 minutes of being a subject matter expert. <laughs> That's just not going to happen. You know what? I love that you said that because I talk about that on Periscope all the time. You know, I do a live stream twice a day on Periscope and Facebook Live. And, and you know, I always say to people, like I used to do longer broadcasts about an hour. You know, it's funny how when it started out, right? You're trying to do like 15 or 20 minutes, like 30. And then all of a sudden, sometimes it's an hour because there's so many people asking questions. But as I dialed some of those back into 15 and 20 minute segments, that's what I always say. You get the no like and trust factor is increased exponentially when you're using live streaming or when you're using a video format, especially when people can engage because then they get to see you're not stopping looking up a book and practicing what you're saying. You're delivering value, you're delivering the content and they get to see right then, do you know what you're talking about? So like you said, the younger demographic is looking at, you know, you know, this kind of thing and, you know, you know, get it, get to the point, get to the point, that kind of stuff. And they continue to drive. And so we need to continue to build that. And then, you know, I'd see here, you know, Jenny Q said something that I loved because I have a course called the rockstar guide to getting it done. And I talk about group tasking and she's always saying, Vicki, you're such a batcher. And then she heard you and she's like, Oh my gosh, he's a batcher. So she's calling you a batcher now. So nice batcher fest, right? That's right. I love batcher it. Fest. So it's very cool. And then, you know, I, I can't see all the comments you guys, so I apologize, but I do know, you know, I, I think I've said hi to everybody I can see in the house here and I appreciate you guys being here. I hope that you shared it out. If you didn't do a girl solid and click there, I know Tim McVeigh popped in. And so thank you so much for being here, Tim, our, uh, you know, one of my Aussie thunder from down under peeps. Um, I believe Mitch is in the house. Thank you for being here as well. Again, we have such a great audience and a great community. Don't you agree? Like Roberto, that we have Absolutely. such great people. Absolutely. And we've got Kim in here. Uh, but, you know, one thing, Vicki, I want to do hint on because I do want to validate what Amy said and why she said it real quick, though. Sure. It, she said it because also what YouTube is trying to get people to understand is that um, when you produce a video, the performance of that video mm -hmm. uh, affects the performance of future videos. Uh, mm -hmm. Matt Gillen, um, a great expert, he used to work at Frederator Networks as a YouTube channel, and now he's a huge uh, video marketing consultant in his own right, more to the higher level brands and the larger businesses. Mm -hmm. um, he understands this, and this is also who I'm going off of, who validated my thesis of like longer form content, because even with the youth demographic, when they went, when Frederator went to stop doing short videos and they started doing longer videos, like any of the cartoons of like 107 facts about Avatar The Last Airbender, like, <laughs> you know, um, 107 facts about Lola Bunny, like that actually kept people because it triggered that curiosity. And it's like, wait, 107 things I didn't know about my favorite cartoon show from the 90s. Wait a minute. And right. then would watch it because YouTube is trading, like as Gary would say, as Gary Vaynerchuk would say, YouTube is day trading and attention. Time is literally currency and money for them. Watch time is the biggest SEO factor in YouTube, meaning the time, not even your attention percentage. That's probably ranked number two or number three based on all indicators. But I know a lot of marketers go in for retention rates, mm -hmm. but you and I both come from the old school world of websites and blogs and you remember Google SEO and you remember that time on site was the single most important variable there was. Time yeah. on site, yeah. not even time on the individual page, right. time on your website. Right. YouTube is no different. They want channel authority based on how much cumulative watch time in a 30 day cycle you have, which is why more content does help you get authority. It does help rank your channel against your competitor just by sure volume, because that's the game that they're playing. It is quantitative, mm -hmm. uh, but quality will translate to how much collective watch time that translates to not individual retention rate percentage, because Vicky, we both know that 30% of $100 is much better than 90% of 15. Right. Absolutely. It's more money. Mm -hmm. It's just more money. So for YouTube, it's just more time. So I want people to come off this conversation. Retention rate's important, but if you understand that the average retention rate in YouTube skews to 20 to 33%, that's what the ceiling looks like. You don't make three to five minute videos if you're thinking about that because you want an average of three to five minutes of watch time. You realize that, well, based on that number, if people are only watching as much as 33% of my video, 
I'd have to watch, I'd have to make a 10 minute video just to get them to watch three minutes. Right, right. Yeah, or a 15 minute video. Like you said, it's a really good point. And so, you know, as we're looking at that, then there's two questions that pop into mind. And then we're going to show another little, uh, a fast little video clip and dive into some real money making stuff, which I know you guys want to know how to make money. And, and so we're going to dive into that piece of the segment. But, you know, uh, you know, there's another issue that has people like perplexed and people are kept sending in thing. And I'm, I'm su subjected to that at the moment as well with my <clears throat> huge uh, subscriber list of 25, right? <laughs> is that, um, that, you know, the URL, van the vanity URL that we can't get until you have a hundred subscribers. And other than that, you can't possibly remember the ridiculous URL that you're given. Funny so, story about yeah. that. <laughs> so I'd love to hear your opinion on that and how we go about making sure we get to that 100 mark so we can change that URL. So what's your opinion on the vanity URL and how, to, how the fastest, easiest way to get one? You don't need a hundred subscribers. Oh, really? That's what I thought. Okay, well, good. Tell How many do you need? Because I, I think that's what YouTube said. Is you can do it with zero. See, well, because no drop one- that knowledge bomb on me because I want to get that changed tomorrow. <laughs> right. I need to make a video about this. This would be a five-minute video that would make sense with me just showing people. And it's also a great way for me to do affiliate marketing because they, when, like, cause the trick here is that all you need to get a vanity URL and all you need to unlock custom thumbnails is to- um, authenticate having a uh, website tied to your YouTube channel and verify your Google Plus account with your phone. I have those both, but when I went to go get my- You have to do an associated, you have to do the, the website, you have to associate the website with your uh -huh. YouTube channel uh -huh. and you have to verify it by either uploading like an HTML file or putting in a single line of code. You do that and you verify your Google Plus account through your YouTube channel with your phone uh, and that's it. Well, we're going to talk tomorrow and um, you can do that video and I will make sure to blast it out to the community because everybody's been asking me the same thing. And I was under the same impression they were. And, and, and even when I went, I went on yesterday, even trying to, because I really wanted to tell people my YouTube channel <laughs> and, and that, you know, and to see if there was any way. And it just says, I, it said I had to get a hundred. It did tell me to do the verification, which was already done. Cause I do have custom thumbnails. So I'm not sure, but I fact, really I'm going to, I'm going to see also while we're talking, just keep uh -huh. going. I'm going to actually, um, give the, I'm going to find the link. Cause I know I bookmarked it somewhere okay. for information. Um, and Excellent. I will, uh, drop that in the, because YouTube actually, um, you know, has this information here. Um, yeah, it says eligibility requirements. Uh, you also have to, your channel has to be at least uh, 30 days old. And it says it itself. So it says to get a custom URL for your channel, your account needs to meet these requirements. Have 100 or more subscribers be at least 30 days old. Have uploaded a photo as your channel icon. Have uploaded channel artwork. But it says here, believe that, it says you can also qualify for a custom URL that aligns with your web domain by okay. linking and verifying your official web page to your connected Google Plus page. And so uh, you can do that and it gives you instructions. So I'm gonna drop that support link from Google and YouTube in the description. And the way I'm gonna make some really, um, actually I have to send it to you because we don't have that here. Hang on one second. So I have you to send can go it. to, if you go to facebook.com slash Vicky Fitch one, the, the okay. open chat is there cause this is live and you can pop it right in there. And then I will, um, you can put it in messenger for me so I can make sure it's in the show notes as well. But again, that right there, I have to tell you is this little piece of knowledge bomb that is, uh, really making me excited. I'm almost going to, you know, end the broadcast just so I can go fix my, <laughs> my YouTube channel. I'm totally kidding because again, you have so much more information that, you know, you're giving people. And again, I so appreciate you being here. And those of you guys have downloaded this again, the podcast, you have to come over and watch episode 49 on right again, just go to YouTube. I'll get you my YouTube channel later, but you got, you're going to have to watch it there. You can watch it on Facebook live right now, but episode 49 with Roberto Blake, because he again is dropping some knowledge bombs and you got to see him because he's a cutie pie. So, you know, I'm just saying Super um, appreciate that. you mind if I drop two more quick knowledge bombs, as far as a resource that people can use. Absolutely. We love knowledge. Okay, so uh, in terms of resources, if you haven't set up a website and you need uh, one of two easy, convenient ways to, uh, to do that, I have two companies I can recommend to you. If you want to do a WordPress word website where you can do content and blogs and all those things that us marketers and business types like to do, then I would recommend Bluehost. And you can go to robertoblake.com slash Bluehost and use my affiliate link to get signed up for that. If you don't want to code and you just want to drag and drop using some great tools and maybe uh, thousands of templates and customize that easily, you can use Wix. 
Wix.com is a great you know tool for that. And you can go to robertoblake.com slash Wix, W-I-X, and you can go ahead and use that tool and get set up. And that's only like, you know, 10 bucks a month, super simple. And you've got a website up and running. And so if you need a presence online, you need to do business. These are the tools you need. They help your YouTube channel. And then, like I was going to say earlier, you can use your blog and your website as a distribution for more of your YouTube content by embedding your YouTube videos in there, because then you can get tied to Google search and now you have more opportunity. So yeah. I love it. Again, I know it's going to go over some people's heads because there's too much. Just listen to this over and over, guys. You can listen to it. You can watch some of the videos we're going to pop in there. And right now, we're going to, because we're going to transition into that segment, I'm, I have a quick, I don't know, it's like a 10 or 15 second video clip that I think you'll find funny, Roberto. And it gives us, or oh, it's, it's, I don't know, 80 seconds. I don't know what it is. But anyway, um, it's very quick. And we're going to just show it really quick or eight seconds. We're going to show it really fast and then we'll dive into the next segment. So watch this video, guys. Here it is. Show me the money. <laughs> and I gotta say, I can just totally see you doing that, Rudder. You know, starting with the rocking out, you know, just, that's right, getting your groove on because you're so happy like that. You know, Cuba get, get Gooding Jr. did such a great job in that movie, Jerry Maguire. And so, you know, you know, when he's talking about show me the money, that's what, you know, when I that was the most information that people were requesting when I asked them, you know, they're like, YouTube, I don't know how to YouTube. I don't have any subscribers. I don't have this. How do I make money? Because if I'm going to actually take the time to do something, that's not just there being housed to show somewhere else, how do I make money? So, you know, uh, we, we showed that clip and I would love to know, I mean, there's, I'm going to throw out a few of the questions because you might be able to blend your answers in together. Um, yeah, go for it. The ad, they were talking about ad breaks, the much swatched, do you do the sidebar, the over the top, do you click all the boxes? you know, which ones, you know, should you do, shouldn't you do affiliate and sponsorships, um, licensing your content and then other ways to make money. That's, those are the main questions that were asked, uh, through Twitter this week. Yeah. All of the above. Yeah. <laughs> so, so tell us about those, what's your favorite newer people. And especially the ad structure came up a bunch. People said, I, I go in to monetize my ads, but I don't know, you know, should I hit all those boxes? Do I only hit some, or is it going to make some people mad? Does it really mean that you can't watch the video or do you have to hit that lower part? You know, it was, there was a lot of questions about it, that. It depends on your content and it depends on your intentions. I don't put ads on or at least not like the video ads or anything on my speaker uh, stuff. Like when I have that, because the plan is to get flown out to somewhere, you know, so that I don't pay thousands of dollars in travel and hotel stays and hopefully to have my fee speaker fee paid. And I'd rather do that than make a couple of pennies on the dollar for views on people watching my 30 minute stage talk in my keynotes. So if I'm doing a video, that's like me speaking on stage, I'm not going to bother with video ads interrupting or something marketing itself to people before I market me to them for right, that right. purpose. So I don't really care about doing it for that. So if your content is to sell you and it's to sell you at a very high dollar amount for something, I wouldn't bother to put ads on it. If I did a video that was specifically about a YouTube thing saying, hey, guys, I wish I haven't done a video for this, but if I want to say, hey, guys, I do YouTube consulting hourly and it's paid and I will give you, you know, I'll address your five biggest pain points, blah, 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 blah. If I'm sitting there, it's basically the sales pitch for, look, I'm making you guys aware that you can do this. You can hire me. If you mm -hmm. don't want to, there's free content here and you can find your own way through the wilderness. But if you want some handholding, I do offer that. It costs something. Sure. You know, that is something that I would never put an ad on there because it's like, this is the thing that's going to sell me and make me like thousands of dollars through transactions over time. I don't need the pennies on the dollar of advertising. Sure. So, that's something I don't put ads on. If I'm already subjecting people to a brand integrated sponsor deal, mm -hmm. I will probably for the first 30 days or at least the first 10 or the first week, not put a non-skippable video ad in front of that and subject them to two forms of advertising at that point. What I will do is I'll enable the banner ads that come across the bottom. I'll enable the sidebar ads so that I make something off of those passively if uh, aside from the upfronts, but after 30 days, it's more than, and I get the most views of it's more than, so that I've done right by the sponsor. It's mm -hmm. more than appropriate for me to then add, um, you know, advertising onto that in the form of pre-roll ads after the fact. So I feel like that's the balance that I strike with my viewers and also with my sponsors, uh, even though they're not even always aware that I'm doing that because 
I, I feel that that's just what the right thing is. But that's my ethos about it. I didn't always do it that way because I didn't think about it. And other people just want as much money as they can. And there's nothing wrong with that if it's not hurting your content or you don't feel that it's somehow uh, not delivering the best uh, relationship or the best upfront for the brand since they gave you upfront money. And so I feel personally about, I want to deliver for them. I want to keep a relationship. And so I feel that that goes the extra mile of, I can get more watch time and more distribution out of this if there's not something interrupting it. And if they pay me up front, they subsidize the viewer experience to make it better for those early adopters, those people who are loyal to me, those people who are fans of mine. Sure. So I would rather go that route. If I'm doing something that I think might be slightly aggressive affiliate marketing, meaning mm -hmm. that it's not an, an integrated brand where I've been prayed up front, but mm -hmm. it might as well be close to it, but me mm -hmm. doing it on my own because I know I will make money. Mm -hmm. Then I might do something similar where I'm not putting as many of the ads on, or maybe I only put the skippable option, even though you get paid more or twice as much for non-skippable ads, sure. because those are a guaranteed payment, because right. it has what's called, from the advertiser side, which I've managed advertising for people, mm -hmm. um, it's uh, TrueView ads. And the TrueView ads are, the advertiser only pays if the video is uh, watched through to a certain point. The gotcha. non-skippable ads guarantee that you're going to get payment, that YouTube's going to get payment, so on and so forth, and that the advertiser is at least going to get some uh, notoriety there. The skippable gotcha. ads, as you know, if they skip it before 10 seconds or 15 seconds, then no money, no transaction takes place. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's something that I think is important to note. Oh, we got Brian Kramer in the house. I know. Brian is a guest that's coming up on the show, too. So excited that he's here. Brian, thanks so much for coming in, buddy. I appreciate it. And I think he's probably worried about the he said, red said, and the fit slap. So he probably wanted to come and check it out and make sure, see if he should be scared. <laughs> Just kidding, Brian. I promise. I'll behave. I promise. That's right. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> I love it. Rob totally surprised me. I had no idea he was going to do that. That rocked, Rob. That was awesome. So, you know, Roberto, again, this is um, what, a, what an amazing opportunity for people here. Like I said, they're, they're gleaning so much information. I haven't even had time to fit slap you. That, like there's been nothing to slap you about. All you're doing is dropping knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. And well, let me give, um, let me give them a little more and let me give them just a little bit more context because you mentioned a couple of things. So you mentioned sponsorships, yeah. you've mentioned affiliate marketing. These are two of my favorite raids away from AdSense revenue. AdSense revenue is the easiest way, but I also say it's the laziest way because what you'll notice is that the narrative of big YouTubers, the, the YouTube megastars, the ones who make hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars um, in their sleep from their YouTube videos. These are people that, I, that I'm mentioning, and again, not dismissively and not I'm not attacking them, that their entire career, much like a celebrity, is predicated on people loving them versus you and I's career is predicated on being right. People don't have to like us. They well, love red us. Red is always right, just so you know. Well, there, is that. <laughs> there is that. But in the event, the unlikely event that you were wrong, wrong that's much more <laughs> detrimental than people just not liking you or not agreeing with something you said. Right. It's a matter of, well, if that was a harsh truth, then I need to accept it because that's what business is. And the thing is, we filter people to like, don't be in our audience if you can't take a punch or fit slap. Like, <laughs> I mean, if, like, don't be in our audience because like, that's what's coming. Like right. work, entrepreneurship, that's pain. That's right. all it is. You want the championship belt? You better be prepared to go 10 rounds with Clubber Lang. Don't, don't <laughs> ask for the belt if that's not what you're in for. You know, so take a punch. Are you, are you, refer, are you like referencing me to Clubber Lang? I'm just curious because that's really harsh. <laughs> no, um, you know, it's like you're much prettier than Clubber Lang. Okay, that, that's all I needed. That's all I need. I'm okay now. <laughs> you know, uh, but, I, I, but in terms of sheer terror, I might put you on the same level. All righty then. I like that too. I like that. Yeah. That, that works for me. So, so go um, ahead and, and, and share so, some. So like, I mean, so YouTube ad revenue, I wouldn't, I would almost not call it the laziest way, but it is like, but it's not because it means you have to be making quality videos, which is not easy to do. And you have to make a lot of them and you're getting paid for use. You're getting paid for performance. So you are getting paid based on either the value of your content, as far as being informative or your likability or being fun and informative, whatever your deal is, whether you're an educator or entertainer or a motivational figure like Eric Thomas, um, Thomas. So it's, or Gary V, or whoever you are, Pat Flynn, it, it's that ad revenue is is entirely based on loyalty. 
-hmm. And loyalty, as you know, is fickle, but it's (laughs) most fickle when it's built on an emotional value versus what we do is built on mostly an intellectual value. And Mm -hmm. the emotion is, it's not that it's an afterthought, but it is skewed the secondary of Mm -hmm. even if people are upset with us in the moment, Mm-hmm. They still want to siphon free value from us and make money because of our knowledge. So we are we're insulated in that regard. It is more important than we be right than we be liked. Uh, right. But we still want to be liked because that can only get you so far. You can only have the grudging acceptance take you so far, and it may not convert to the maximum dollars. Right. So we need both for us to maximize and get our most money. We need to be both correct in our execution, in our delivery, in what we're saying, in the value that we deliver, while also being likable and approachable and acceptable, uh, you know, by basic standards. And that's, and you know, and that's the difference between being uh, a thought leader versus just being an entertainer. And there's well, nothing Wrong. Yeah, and I think but, that we, I think that though, that, to add to that, that's something that's really important is that we also have to emotionally connect with the audience. The, the connection, the authenticity and the transparency that, that we deliver, you know, whether it's through, um, you know, sharing an emotional story, something that, that is, you know, near and dear to our hearts, giving people value from our own personal experience of trial, you know, that we, we transition to triumph. I think that that, that in connection creates so much, such a stronger bond that your audience now is now connected to you on an intellectual as well as an emotional level. And that's a bond that's not so easily broken, even if they are, because they are a fickle audience. But I think when we connect those two pieces together, it gives us that strand of three, you know, that, that really braids it together and says, okay, you know, I'm not, I'm not jumping ship so easily. There's going to have to be some, some really major upset to make me just say, Hey, I'm done. I'm Roberto is no longer a cutie pie and I'm out. (laughs) Right on. No, I say, I tell people that vulnerability can Mm -hmm. amplify value, but I tell them to be careful and that there's a fine line there. Um, And the thing is you can make yourself too vulnerable to where you become emotionally overly invested in the, um, in the being like things where you can dilute the value because you're scared of that fickleness. And and the thing is you have to be, if your money relies on being liked uh, versus monetizing in other ways, which is why I believe in the diversification model of YouTube. The reason I have to stress that is because Everyone looks at the top. Everyone looks at Steve J, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg in the business world. But in the world of when we're talking about YouTube as a platform, well, that now becomes you're looking at um, PewDiePie, Jenna Marble, Superwoman, <laughs> I Justine. And again, the far majority of YouTubers are entertainers, not business people. We know that the maximum ceiling in terms of a following for business people, Tony Robbins, Tony freaking Robbins has less than a quarter of a million subscribers in YouTube. Beauty mm. past 44 million, you mm. know? So one of the greatest gurus and mentors and uh, personal power and business minds of our lifetime has a fraction of the following in a platform where he's giving away advice that you would have to go to a $2,000 seminar to get. He's mm-hmm. giving it away on his YouTube channel and he is superseded by literally um, like hundreds of thousands of followers to someone who plays video games and is very entertaining, mind you, and shouts <laughs> at a camera. And so that tells you what the marketplace skews like in right. terms of the youth demographic, in terms of leadership. And I say that to warn people in the audience to say, I know this is an older audience, but I say, in YouTube, you can't just look at what the top is doing because there's not context there. You right. can't look at the richest and most successful YouTuber when you're thinking sure. about how to make money in YouTube because mm-hmm. the, the entire way and system of how they're doing it, even the ones that built business after the fact, they were not business people. So right. you can't go off of that. You have to follow more of what someone like Gary Vee did or someone like Marie Forleo or even some of what the tech YouTubers are doing that mm-hmm. sell and advocate for products and brands like Intel and Microsoft and Dell. People like Marquez Brownlee, people like Linus uh, from Linus Tech Tips who built his uh, company Linus Media. You have to look at people like that that sell real products or services sure. and have built brands on being uh, brand ambassadors with the largest companies in the world, but not off of an entertainment value, Mm -hmm. but off of a a, a service or a thought leadership model or a subject matter expert model. Well, and, you know, and that's, you're bringing up like really good points. Like I said, I'm sure there's some people in here that are going, you know, like, Wow. Like that, like that's so much, right. And it's good, you know, and Kim, thank you so much for saying you're loving this. And Brian, I see that you wrote promise. And I know that that had to do something with something I said, like, you're going to 
take the fit slap. I'm not sure which one it was, but Joyce, Joyce is in the house too. Thank you guys for being here. Eddie, thank you so much as well. You guys, again, you're, you're a great audience and I hope that you guys are enjoying the enlightened audio visual, what they're doing here. If you guys are doing podcasts and stuff where you're delivering value, you've got to check it out. Talk to Miss Jenny Q, talk to Rob Hicks, talk to Sam Gonzo and, and make sure that you're leveled up your business, right? Cause remember in this, there's an, it's a noisy atmosphere out there. When you can step up your game and show people that you're actually committed to your craft, it shows that you are an expert in your field or you're certainly someone to watch, right? And that's what we're trying to identify. Well, we already know that Roberto is. And, um, you know, I have a, a quick graphic. You know, I don't know if you know Roberto, but each time people come on the show, we we um, have, I have my VA transcribes the podcast and we create some visual graphics and stuff. So we have a quick um, graphic. I think Rob has it. And uh, that is one of your quotes. I believe in execution and proving results, not just following best practices and theories. So that was a quote we took from you. Hopefully you enjoyed them. We do tweet them out and put them on social media as well as just to support you and tell you, you know, we'll be pulling out some of the knowledge bombs. Although I'm pretty sure my VA is going to be busy for a month with all the stuff that you dropped today <laughs> because there's so many things. And again, I know that you probably have more stuff. We could probably have like five episodes just on you telling us how to monetize, but I do have some other questions. So can we flow into those. And if we have time, which I don't know if we're going to have time or not, because we only have about 20 minutes left. Um, we can flow. Well, one thing I harp on for the monetized thing to wrap that up is the, the best product, the best, the best money-making model in, in any platform is to sell things. And Gary, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk advocates for this a lot. And like, it's funny because he's in a service-based business. I'm right now in a very service-based business and he doesn't go the information product guru model that he could. Uh, and he says there's nothing wrong with that, but it's not it, it's not his thing. And I totally understand, but it is my thing. And that's where I'm going next year. I'm gonna mm -hmm. dominate Amazon. That's the next search engine that I'm gonna dominate. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, I say that to say this, sell stuff. Sell right. stuff. Sell, you wanna make money in YouTube? Sell stuff. You're a subject matter expert, get a $30 ebook out and sell it. Get a third. Get a second, a third one, and sell it, sell it, sell it. Because if you're the worst salesperson in the world, you'll sell 100 units a month of a product. If you have a platform that advocates for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, in the largest search engine in the world, and the second largest search engine in the world, mm -hmm. selling 100 units of something is god-awful salespersonship in my opinion. <laughs> um, Thus, especially if it's something under $100. So in my opinion, if you have a $30 MVP that you're keeping 70 to 90% margin on, uh -huh. And you move a hundred units, you make three grand in your sleep. That's better than the median salary of most Americans. Sure. So, um, you know, that sounds really good to me. And thus I would, I would say sell something and sell something in the sweet spot of under $50, keep mm -hmm. 70 to 90% margin on it. And if you are a crap salesperson, you'll make bank. Well, if they're a crap salesperson, first of all, I have a book called Seven Ways to Close More Sales with Confidence. So we can definitely help them out with that, right? And uh, because I'm an expert in the direct sales market, as well as having built and sold four other companies myself from the ground up, I definitely can help them with that. So if you guys are worried about that, let me help you with that. Between Roberto and I, we can help you totally rock it. And I see Mr. Mike Stelzner is in the house. Mike, it's good to have you here. Enlightened Audio Visual is the one producing the content today. Um, you can talk to uh, Rob uh, Hicks about that. And then Mike, you know, I've been trying to get you as a guest on my show. So I really would love to have you. Kim Wendy says, Roberto is rocking it. And you totally are my friend. You are, again, like, there's, there's so much work. I'm going to have to cut some things out because there's no way I can deliver it all in the next like 12 minutes. But again, I, I cannot tell you enough that this, what you're delivering here is value to the consumer. It's, it's entertaining and it's overwhelming for some. What we already know that when you have a lot of information on a topic that people are not that familiar with some of it, people, I just want to remind you, it's going to go over your head. It's okay. You only, if you only retain 10%, take the 10% you retain, implement it, watch it again, take another 10% implement it. And before you know it, you'll know exactly what you're doing. You'll have an execution strategy that will produce an income for you and will produce uh, a following and people will start to get to know, like, and trust you. I have so, about 120 videos on my YouTube channel specifically on how to grow a YouTube channel from scratch. It's everything I did. I documented the process weekly of my growth from pretty much zero to over 140,000, almost 150,000 subscribers. So if they miss anything here, over on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Roberto Blake 2, like the number two, you can ease into it five to eight minutes at a time through these videos. There are a few ones that are webinars and you can 
get through them at your own pace and you can pick this stuff up. Well, and like I said, that's exactly it. We will have your whole YouTube channel in the show notes. Again, when you go there, you'll, first of all, you see a lot of orange, a lot of green shirts, a lot of red shirts. You get to see all these how-to videos. They're organized so beautifully, which is another question I wanted to ask. I'm not sure if we'll get time, but, um, you know, you had talked about Tony Robbins a little bit ago. I'm really excited that, um, you know, uh, Anthony Conklin and I interviewed him um, on, you know, on a platform and we're, he actually invited us to go in November. We're going to UPW to meet with him. And so it's going to be an excellent, you know, opportunity to even, you know, check out different ways that he's doing things and implementing those opportunities and doing some, hopefully, I know probably not inside the facility, but outside to do some live streaming and even to use, you know, the catalyst of the, what you were talking about before name brands, hashtags that can be trending at that time to really set, drive traffic to your videos and to the things that are going on. So, you know, I, I will definitely be looking, well, I'm sure you have some videos on, on some of those topics as well. And some piece, the things that, you know, one of the things that came up and I have to agree with was um, channel art is a real pain in the tuchus on uh, YouTube. Do you, have you done, since seen as you're a graphic artist, have you done a, a video on how to create good YouTube art, you know, our YouTube channel art, because it is complicated. I mean, even what, you know, you got this box and then this box and then this box, and then what do you do with the space up here and here, you know, it's crazy. I have. I have some videos coming out on that because okay. it's, uh, initially they're going to feel probably just a little advanced for people because it starts with the thing I know the most, which is Photoshop, okay. which I help a lot of my audience just because a lot of them are creatives and they at least have a basic knowledge of Photoshop. Sure. So, and that's probably the best tool, honestly, for this mm -hmm. overall to get it solid for your branding, have it look professional. Mm -hmm. My alternative opinion for people is that they should consider outsourcing it mm -hmm. uh, affordably. And I, if, and the thing is, uh, I do overall branding packages for social media. That can be a little pricey, but if people want quality, I'm available for that. But if not for one-off projects, I do source to other designers. I've built a network of people that I can reach out to on their behalf and connect them with. So, you know, that's something that is on the table. And uh, there are also template options out there. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, they can use a free tool like Canva mm -hmm. and that will help them. So mm -hmm. uh, those are the kind of things that I recommend. And initially they can keep it very simple. Uh, so those are, those are all options on the table. Well, okay. So that, that's a good one. I know I use a, a different type of software that, you know, from coming from a, a digital scrapbooking background, I have a, you know, a software that I use and, and, um, and like you said, the layouts and stuff are, even when you have the template, because they do provide you with the, you know, with something that you can utilize, but it's that piece that you're talking about, the branding, how you can, you know, create that whole package for people that can really help again, level up their business. Just like we were talking about producing a show in this kind of platform to be able to have your YouTube channel art, your Facebook art, you know, have all that stuff collectively, a good look good across the board is why they would want to, you know, certainly um, have somebody like you do the work there. And that's exactly. something. That there's a, there's a psychological strategy. Remember we talked about thumbnails. There's a psychological strategy, as you know, from my YouTube channel, I I use very specific strategies around my thumbnails. I come from a background in advertising where I used to do billboards for like HBO and uh, Big Ten Network and brands like that when I worked in advertising in New York. And I approach YouTube with the same ethos of I've only got a limited amount of time as they're passing by to grab their eye and their attention and create context. Mm hmm. Well, and, and those are, that's exactly it. And that's why we want to deal with professionals. That's why people like you, um, you know, are, are really attractive to, to, you know, entrepreneurs because they don't have that skill set and they want to have a professional having somebody kind of piecemeal it together. You know, it doesn't give the same kind of a, a feel and you're not going to get the same price point. If you're, you know, if you have kind of a $5 graphic image versus a, you know, a, a $10,000 graphic image, I'm not saying he charges 10,000 I'm saying, but there's a difference. It's like what they call, you know, the beer and champagne right? The beer budget and the champagne taste is yes. that we, we can have a beautiful look and still with, you know, with a high quality person without, you know, breaking the bank. So exactly. Um, it's, it's also representative of like, what dollar amount do you want to charge? It is partly in proportion to that because you need a look that's representative of the level of consumer that you want. There's yeah. a difference between going to a fast food joint versus going and buying a $12 burger. I mean, sure. and, and, and ambiance is part of it. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I think people need to take that in mind, not take it for granted. I think a lot of people, I believe in a model in business of, I mean, this is even YouTube talk. This is biz, straight up business talk. Sure. I believe in thinking in everything in terms of an investment and in terms of what is the end goal and what is the value proposition of this investment mm -hmm. versus 
what is this costing me? It's like, oh, no, 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 no. What does it cost me to get it wrong is much more important to me. Absolutely. And you're, you're that's a, absolutely right, because you can certainly lose business just by doing that. I mean, you're, you're again, dropping so much knowledge here. I'm going to ask one more question. Well, two more, one on one topic, one on another, and then you kind of going through our wrap up. So, um, you know, there, I heard a, uh, a friend or a, a friend of a friend really that talked about a tip in order to get your YouTube videos to play one after the other, besides just having your name. So I wonder if you could share that with us and I can see if it's the same tip or different tip and see, you know, projecting. So people that want to have their videos, cause we all know that lovely screen comes up with the, the other videos coming up. If you have 150 videos and can get those to continue to play, um, how do you do that? Playlist, 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 playlist. And when you're distributing in social media, don't link out just from your YouTube video. Click check the box in the share box to link out the playlist. And so you should always make your content with a playlist strategy in mind. And the thing is, when you don't have a lot of content, even if it isn't all related, create some kind of playlist that might even say, the title of the video and then mix so that they then just still play some videos of yours and load up three to five related videos of yours in there to get the value of the watch time and to keep them trapped in your ecosystem. And if you're going to embed a video on your website, don't just embed the one video, embed the video with the playlist. And then you can, again, oh, that was five minutes or eight minutes and that was value. I've got another 12 before I have to leave and pick up the kids. I'll stick around and then, you know, that's mm -hmm. what you get. So that helps your channel. That helps your authority. That helps your ranking. That does everything you want to do and it traps them more into your ecosystem, allowing them to build the relationship and rapport that will convert. So I love that. Traps them in your ecosystem. I love it. I love it. I love it. You're so cute and you're adorable. Okay. One other thing on live streaming, right? You know, with YouTube having the option to live stream direct into, you know, YouTube. And like, I know my phone is the edge seven. And so I can actually, according to the guy that sold me the phone, I can actually do that. I haven't done it yet, but I, that I can, I want to know what your opinion is that since the viewership, well, obviously with my 25 viewers, <laughs> I might not get a lot of hits there right now, but Hey, Christ. My audience is growing there, but what do you, what's and remember you can YouTube live, YouTube's trying to promote live more. So guess what? You'll probably get more than your 25. Okay. That's number one, two, you can distribute and share it out into your other social media. So distribution in live and you know, live is very attractive. So there's that you can hack hashtag strategy and anyone who's liking it while it's there can go out into uh, the social medias as well. Plus your own distribution. So there's that. You can also schedule it, which means that you can get people to tune in. So again, more distribution, bring people from your uh, Facebook groups, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I, I would say that there's a value there and then it saves it automatically. So then you have the archive, it becomes Netflix. So it's worthwhile. Now with that in mind, I don't necessarily, unless you just happen to be mobile, um, I don't like the idea of doing it from the phone, even though you certainly can, the quality is just fine. And I've actually seen um, Cenk Uger from uh, the Young Turks do that whenever breaking news happens and he happens to be on the road, they'll go ahead and do some uh, commentary before they can do the polished stuff and just do it from his phone. And mm -hmm. so again, I think it's perfectly fine to do that. And it works out, it works more than well enough. The quality is good. My preference is what we're doing here. Like mm -hmm. I would love, for example, like if, um, if I were to like an intro to Tony Robbins, I would actually want to do a, a YouTube live with him using something like OBS or using some other distribution or using this with Zoom uh, to, and then have it produced probably by um, Enlightened Audio Visual, like, so that's done right. I, mm -hmm. you know, professionals, uh, so that we can do that and distribute it to uh, YouTube and maybe even simulcast it to uh, Facebook Live for that audience. Mm -hmm. And so if I were to get uh, Tony Robbins himself mm -hmm. uh, to do an interview with me, I would want to do it on YouTube Live because it's archived forever. It's my main platform that I either want to grow or where I have my ecosystem. Mm -hmm. It would be a big uh, win for me. And then I would distribute that though to using something like Zoom to be able to do it to Facebook Live. And I believe you guys can do it for Periscope as well, simulcast. So I would take advantage of something like that. And I can't do that if I'm doing it from my phone. So I would think about context of what's the most advantageous. Now, if, you're, if something happens and you want to address it immediately, you can absolutely do it from your phone. And then it's a great opportunity for it. And it works very well. So that's my thoughts on it. Well, I, because I have, you know, my, one of our sponsors is Archon Mounts, which we're going to talk about in a minute, but because I can, I multi, 
right? They're awesome. Because I can multi-stream, I thought about when I do my Periscope Facebook Live, because I have three, you know, units that I could try it and see, you know, what happens at least to dabble in it. You can always delete the video, right? If it <laughs> doesn't work well. But because I live stream twice a day, it's, I, I mean, I'm fairly confident the comp the content is certainly there and, and the delivery is going to be similar to, it's not going to have the, the background or, well, it's still going to have that lovely office of mine back there. <laughs> but, um, so anyway, I really appreciate that because I wanted to, I want to find, you know, we always, always want to be expeditious with our time. So speaking of that, we are really coming to the end of our show here. I wanted, I did want to pop up your, um, you told me what your favorite quote was. We grabbed some graphics from your quote. I mean, from your website, I hope that was okay. And put your favorite quote up there. Failure is not fatal. Success is not final. It's by Winston Churchill, but it has your name on there. I don't know if you can read it from uh, where you're at it, but it says Roberto favorite quote by Winston Churchill. And so, um, you know, we appreciate that. And like I said, we're always trying to drive value back to our guests, you know, back to the community. We are going to be putting up some information about you in just a second, but taking a quick thing, you guys know that I do do two podcasts a week. Um, I do Vicki Fetch Live. This week is a Vic the Bully in Your Head because my new book coming out. We have, um, Rob's going to pop up. Miss Stacey Lynn Harp is uh, our guest this week, and uh, she's going to share with us her trials and her tragedies and how she's turned them into triumph. And it's very heartwarming, heart-wrenching story, but I hope that you guys will tune in Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 o'clock Eastern uh, for that. And then you guys probably know that the He Said Red Set has typically been a little bit of business and a whole lot of fun, right? It's about witty banter and it's about being a kind of a little bit of smart alecky and, you know, kind of fitch slapping crazy stuff. Um, but I'm on the hunt for a new he. I need a new co-host. I'm looking for somebody to be a stable, permanent part um, that where we can have other guests on, but there's got to be debate and witty banter. And, you know, I got to get my argument on sometimes. So uh, if you guys know somebody, go to he said red said com and uh, click on the link of join, you know, that you're interested in applying for the hunt for heat. And also to remind you that um, besides the fact that Archon Mounts is one of my sponsors, Aaron from Archon Mounts is my guest on he said red said next week. Now, Aaron will definitely get a fit slap because he's always out of line, you know, <laughs> but he's an amazing contributor to the online streaming community. He is so helpful. And we're in the middle right now of a six-week contest that um, I am part of. Uh, with Kim Garst and Kim Coles and, and Brandy Anthony. So we have that contest up here. And if you guys will click on those links, there's six Facebook pages you like. Those of you who are here right now, just click on the like this page. You got five other ones to like, including Archon Mounts and Kim Garst, which a lot of those you're probably already liking anyway. And you can win the Archon Mount of your choice each week, plus prize packages of uh, about $3,000 altogether. So I hope that you guys will participate that. And next Monday, I will be live at the Archon Mount studio. And and, um, and then Aaron will be my guest on the show that night. So it's going to be an action-packed week. I really appreciate you guys being here. And then Roberto, do you have any last minute things to uh, tell people, uh, you know, about you? We're going to put up a show card that has all of your social media and your website so people can take a screenshot of it. But is there any last parting words that you want to share with them? So uh, what I would say is I think it's important to understand this is something that's even the thesis of a book that I'm writing, the Just Create Awesome book, is um, my, my thesis has always been you have to figure out your your why, and that's your purpose. It's so like Simon Simic says, start with why. Your why is your purpose. That's the higher level thing that you're trying to accomplish and what you're serving. Now, your what is at the bottom here, and it's the thing that you're passionate about. That's your, you know, that's your passion. That's your drive. That's what excites you, what wakes you up. And also, that should be something that you're reasonably good at because that matters. That self-awareness matters. Mm -hmm. And so aligning that passion, your what, to your why is done through your how. That's execution. That's practicality. That's all the work in between. It's like, how do I make what I'm passionate about practical? What work, what steps does it take to take this thing that I love okay. and have it accomplish this big, life-changing, overwhelming goal, putting a dent in the universe. And for me, that's like, I was driven very much by my narrative of like, I worked in creative services and I loved what I did. I didn't love the people sometimes and <laughs> it drove me nuts. Literally, I went through depression and, you know, thoughts of like, believe it or not, suicide. It was social, like, and severe anxiety and social anxiety. It was terrible. And mm -hmm. I was being bullied and harassed not only as a teenager, but in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when I decided to pivot from that and become an entrepreneur, it wasn't enough for me to just want to be successful and make money. My higher goal and purpose was I decided that what I loved was not only creating awesome things and sharing them with the world, but mm -hmm. creating those experiences for other people and teaching other people how to do the same and enabling them 
to be successful. I was like, well, to do that, I have to educate and motivate people. I have to enroll them through resources and tools. And I have to encourage them to keep going because they need to find this patience and they need to hang in there. And they understand that what they are passionate about, it can be made practical. They don't have to end up being a starving artist in a cardboard box. This is the right. greatest single age for creators there's ever been. Most creatives are tied to advertising. It's $187 billion a year industry. It's Absolutely. right there for the taking. And it's huge. And I know that Facebook is very, they're very limiting with an hour and a half. So we have like 60 seconds before we may actually get cut off. And we've been trying, we've had some glitches with them lately. So I didn't mean to cut you off. It's fabulous content. I want you to throw up his card really quick, Rob, while I tell them who I am. For those of you guys, again, on the podcast, thank you so much for downloading. Thank you for participating. Be sure to go to uh, uh, facebook.com slash Vicky Fitch one to watch this and go to my YouTube channel. My URL will be uh, youtube.com slash Vicky Fitch, I hope. Uh, but please just definitely check it out. And for those of you who don't know me, I want to introduce myself. You guys, my name is Vicki Fitch. I am a direct sales expert. I have been in the industry 20 years, top 10 sales and recruiting internationally for more than a decade. I'm also have built and sold four companies from the ground up. I'm an author, a speaker, and an international business consultant, helping you get outside what I call the 5,000 to turn your passion into your profits. So I appreciate you guys being here. If you want a free consultation with me, you can go to vickifitch.com forward slash 20. That will also be in the show notes because I I'm here to help you bring you great guests. You guys know I have these two podcasts a week on Monday night at 730. He said Red said and Vicky Fitch live a fresh perspective on Wednesdays. So I appreciate each and every one of you. And I want to remind you like I always do to dream it, believe it and achieve it. Ciao.